All right, guys, let's get into it. Season 7 premiere of Walking Dead was on last night, and we finally got to see who was on the business end of Lucille at the hands of Negan. Uh, before we get into that, though, let's uh, quickly get into where season six the you know the finale left off and the build up to last night it was you know it's about eight months since uh season six ended on that cliffhanger of you know not revealing who uh negan did wind up killing so we had so much time to you know build up our speculation and uh, theorize about who it was and you know we got to see a lot of uh you know the new things coming up in the season with you know, ezekiel and shiva the tiger and all these other things that we're going to be seeing uh so you know a lot of people were very angry at the way that season six ended and that goes to show uh i think more uh a reflection of our uh culture right now in terms of you know our dependency on instant gratification i mean we are in an online generation right now, an on-demand generation, I should say, where you know we want things th and we want it right away. We don't want to wait. We don't want to wait a week. We don't want to wait a couple months. You know, we want that instant gratification. So when you have to wait uh, eight months to find out the resolution of something that happened, yeah, uh, you know, people are gonna get angry and upset, and they're gonna stop watching the show, or they're gonna complain, or they're gonna bitch, or whatever they're gonna do. Uh, but for me. You know, obviously it does suck having to wait that long, but the sign of a good storyteller is to leave the readers or the fans or the watchers or whatever medium you're using, you know, wanting more and coming back for more. And I believe that's what that show continually does, you know, good or bad, you know, and people keep coming back to watch and they're coming back in record numbers and droves. Um, so, you know, we finally did get the premiere last night. You know, the buildup was crazy, uh, in terms of who, who actually bit the, uh, bit the dust here. Abraham got it, you know, uh, the eeny, meeny, miny, mo. he got picked. You know, we didn't find out until probably like 15 minutes into the episode until we finally, you know, got to see the reveal of that. And then even still, we weren't, you know, they... The way that they did it, they had showed that it was Abraham, but then, uh, you know, a little bit later, they did a different point of view, so where you could actually see it, you know, in full force, and it was, you know, stomach churning how, how brutal and just disgusting it actually was, and then to keep things, uh, you know, on their heads here, we we got not one death, but we got two, uh, Glenn, also unfortunately. Uh, uh, you yeah, know, passed, passed on from the show. Uh, you know, Daryl tried to, uh, you know, make a move and wound up, uh, costing Glenn his life for that. Um, so if, if you're a, uh, a comic reader like myself, uh, maybe you did see this coming, uh, you know, as Glenn does die the same exact way in the comics. Uh, but it was crazy to see just how comic accurate his death was on the show i mean even negan's dialogue the whole time you know glenn's eyes popping out i mean that's verbatim right from the page um just horrifying to see and you know heart-wrenching as you know we've we've seen we've been a part of glenn's story from season one so i mean to see a character that we've you know grown with over the years you know, die that way was awful to see but you know the story's gonna go on. Maggie's, uh, yeah, you know, Maggie's the only one who, after all that, was still wanting to take the fight to Negan and the Saviors. And uh, so she, I think, will become a, an even stronger character from all of this moving forward. Uh, but the rest of the episode was really uh, it served two purposes: not only you know for the pure gore and shock value of everything, but uh, to really show that. Negan is here, he is here to stay, and he is here to be in charge. And that's what his goal was with Rick when he, you know, he drug him along in the RV. He had him fetching his hatchet and the group of walkers. You know, it was to show him that, you know, he's going to make him do whatever it is that he wants him to do. And, and it didn't only serve that purpose for Rick, it also served the same purpose for the fans, you know, to show you that, you know, Rick isn't going to be the one calling the shots for the group anymore. 
you know, they're going to be beholden to Negan for everything. You know, even when he was almost forced to cut off Carl's arm with the hatchet at the end there. And if you're a comic reader, you know that uh, Rick does lose his uh, part of his arm, his hand in the comics. You know, the governor cut that off. But and I, for a while there, I, I really, really thought that he was going to take Rick's hand. And then when he almost forced uh, him to do it to Carl, that that would have been an even crazier twist. And that's just something that the show does really well. I mean, it, it, t- it takes that inspiration from the comics and twists it around to, you know, make a more cohesive visual story which is you know something that i can appreciate not everything's going to be exactly the same and that's okay because it's an adaptation that's fully understandable um but just moving forward it's it's going to be really crazy to see how the rest of the group is you know dealing with their new circumstances and situation uh, not having rick as you know the top dog anymore and uh you know just seeing how they uh they're scavenging for uh, items and supplies and things like that to make sure that they have to give to Negan. You know, they have to give him half of their stuff uh, every week. So it should be uh, r- really, uh, really intense to see the new, uh, the new world order, if you could call it. Uh, and quoting Negan there, um, you know, really, really great episode. It kept me on the edge of my seat. I had my heart pounding the whole time. I was so like filled with uh, that nervous dreadful energy you know and it, it really played through through the whole episode so uh definitely looking forward to this season and where they're going ahead with some of our new characters uh new groups new locations and new situations uh do me a favor let me know what you guys think about uh thought about the show in the comment section below i'm sure we're going to be very split and divided on that you know whether you liked it whether you hated it whether you stop watching after season six or whether you're going to stop watching after this episode uh you know whatever it is just you know leave your thoughts below and thanks for listening